Hi there, I'm Doug Winnie. I'm going to kick off a new series on ActionScript training to help you get up and running with Flash Professional using ActionScript 3. ActionScript over the last few versions has evolved quite a bit. And for those that might have worked with Flash 4 or Flash 5, ActionScript allowed you to create really cool interactivity in Flash. With ActionScript 3, ActionScript is now object-oriented, which gives you a lot more flexibility and power when you actually start working with Flash. When I teach ActionScript and Ajax at San Francisco State, it's not really the code and the syntax that's hard. It's changing the way that people think about ActionScript and Flash. So what we're going to do is actually use some, exa uh, some example code and start deconstructing it so you can see how ActionScript works. And we're going to get started by actually taking objects that are on the stage and learning how to access their properties uh, through ActionScript in the Actions panel. So what I have right now in Flash is I have a new project that's an ActionScript 3 project. When you create your Flash files, you want to create a new document and then make sure that you use Flash File ActionScript 3. When you do this, you're going to be using ActionScript 3, which we're going to be using through all the different uh, tutorials here. When you've done that, I have a file here that I've already saved called Accessing Objects. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new, uh, a new graphic object. We're just going to create a simple circle here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to convert it into a symbol. Now the reason why you have to convert it to a symbol in order to access it is right now it's just a drawing object. Everything we're doing in ActionScript is going to be attached to an object called a movie clip. So if you've done this before, you'll know that when you do convert to symbol, you get this panel that opens up. And you're able to name the symbol and then say whether it's a movie clip, a button, or a graphic. Everything that we're going to do is with a movie clip, so make sure you have movie clip selected. I'm just going to call this circle. Now something that might not show up when you're actually using this for the first time is the advanced panel. There's a basic advanced toggle that you can use to go back and forth between the advanced and the basic versions of this dialog. If you go to the advanced version, you see this linkage area down at the bottom. We're going to need to use this linkage area to give ActionScript a name to actually code to. ActionScript requires every object that you have in the library to have some sort of name that it can associate with so we can actually then access that object. So we're going to act, use export for ActionScript. You can just accept the defaults here. We're going to go over into some of the details of this in the next tutorial. So I click OK, and I'm going to get this a dialog box, which you can just click OK. We'll explain this in a, in a future tutorial. And we instantly have an object on the stage. And if I go into the library, you'll see that I have a circle object here listed in the library. Every single thing that we have in the library is uh, can be repeated on the stage over and over again. So I could take a circle here and drag another one, drag another one, drag another one. A lot of times I like to use the analogy of, of, of sticky notes and thinking of every single thing you have in the library as a stack of sticky notes. So when I actually want to create a single version of that, I'm peeling a piece off the sticky notes and I'm creating what's called an instance. Every single instance that I create is identical to the stack of sticky notes. In this case, it's orange. What we have in Flash is we have a stack of sticky notes which represent a circle. So every single circle that we create is going to look exactly the same. Now what we need to do in order to differentiate each circle from one another is to give each circle what's called an instance name. And the instance name is what ActionScript is going to use to access that particular instance of the circle. So if you go to the Properties panel, you'll see that there is a field at the top called Instance Name. So with the circle selected, I'm going to give this instance name a name of my circle. So now the object is created. And now I can actually start using ActionScript to start coding directly to that circle. One of the things that you'll notice with instance names is that there's some best practices with how you name them. Now you can name in instance names whatever you want. You can name them, in this case I call it my circle, my, my white circle, black outline circle. You can call it whatever you want. One rule, though, is that it cannot contain any spaces, and it also cannot start with a number. Generally, instance names shouldn't have punctuation, but you can use an underscore. So in this case, I'm using what's known as camel case, which means as I, the first letter is lowercase, and every word after that is capitalized. This is generally a best practice when you're naming instances of objects that you place on the stage. So now I've created the circle, it's named, and now I can start using the actions panel and start modifying the properties of the circle. 